Today, I wanna to share two lenses that I use around 95% of the time for my professional and leisure photography. And since making the switch to the Fujifilm X-T5 for my leisure photography, I have put myself in a very unique position of being more selective with what lenses to buy. So in today's video, I wanna talk about some photography advice that I just wish I listened to sooner which is every great photographer should own a mid-range zoom and a fast prime lens. And I was recently in Newcastle, Australia for a wedding and I had some spare time to shoot in the afternoon and the following morning with the X-T5 on these two lenses. So I wanted to share that with you while I explain my thought process around this topic and my personal opinion. So let's just jump right into it. Lenses are expensive. There's no way to really avoid the cost. Of course, you can buy third-party glass, but I do recommend sticking in that medium price range for decent quality. And it's just ludicrous to expect beginner and advanced photographers to own every single focal length available. It's also incredibly difficult as a photographer to find what focal length works best for you and how a focal length can impact your photography style. So that's why I recommend a mid-range zoom. Because you just have that ability to shoot a scene with a wide field of view, a more neutral field of view, and you can enter into the world of telephoto. My main use lens for my professional work is the 24 to 70 for that exact reason. Now this does come with a cost and no lens is perfect because the problem that I have with zooms over primes is that it's incredibly easy to be lazy and not learn how a focal length can impact your composition. And I'm fully guilty of this as when I picked up my first zoom, rather than assessing a scene and deciding what focal length to shoot at, I would assume my composition and just stand there kind of zooming in and out with no real intention in the focal length and how the focal length's perspective would impact my final image. So I now use a zoom lens like a prime, meaning that I'll observe the scene, decide what focal length I think that will work the best and make that composition work with that focal length without zooming in and out, which is the exact same process I follow when shooting on a prime lens. And, and as an example, these images that I recently shot on my little 18 to 55, you'll see that these are not just some random focal lengths. Each focal length that I use had a purpose and match up with the popular focal ranges found on prime lenses. For portraits, this lens actually held up pretty well. The APS-C crop factor is a little bit annoying and I definitely prefer a f1.4 APS-C prime or an f2.8 zoom on a full frame body for portraits. I actually don't shoot wide open all of the time, but it's kind of a necessity for portraits and that's why you also need a fast prime lens to complement a zoom lens. There are two main technical advantages of a fast prime over a zoom, 
which is obviously to do with the lower aperture. So you get much better low light performance, meaning that you can shoot at faster shutter speeds or drop that ISO. Like these examples shooting the ocean pools, I wanted to keep my shutter speed high to eliminate motion blur to get the crashing waves sharp while keeping my ISO relatively low. You also get a lot more subject separation with a fast prime with that gorgeous shallow depth of field. But the best focal length to complement a mid-range zoom is a prime lens with a neutral field of view. So you can pick up anything from a 35 to a 50 millimeter. And the reason for this is that these focal lengths are incredibly versatile. Like I said in my previous video, I've been using this Viltrox 27mm f1.2 on the X-T5, giving me my favourite focal length of a 40mm after the APS-C crop factor. And over the past two weeks testing out the X-T5 with these two lenses, I've been able to capture a range of diverse images from a collection of focal lengths and combining deep and shallow depth of field together. Alright guys, welcome to Busan in Korea and I've just been shooting here this morning with my friend Sidi and it really got me thinking on the point of having a fast prime lens and having a versatile zoom. So majority of this trip I've been shooting on my little 18 to 55 millimeter, but when I want to dream out and blur out the background I've been loving using this 27 millimeter f1.2. Now this is about a 40 millimeter full frame field of view. So yes, having that fast prime has given me the ability to really blur out the background and get those nice dreamy shots even though majority of the time I am shooting around f8, f5.6 on my little APS-C X-T5. It just gives you that variety in shots for having everything in focus and out of focus. So I'm just going to go back and start shooting and we'll see you soon. So I don't really recommend anything wider than a 24mm or anything past an 85mm. And in saying that, I actually do own a range from 12 to 300, but these lenses have very intended use for my photography. Like this 135mm is an absolute staple for my wedding photography work, but I only use this lens about 2% of the time on a job, or when I was in the Brazil at the start of the year, I took my 7200 that I hardly used during my six week stay, and didn't result in any photos that I am particularly proud of. So even after my experience, I am still on the fence with the Fujifilm X-T5, whether I should pick up that 18mm f1.4 and a 56mm prime, giving me that classic 28 to 85mm focal range covered. The 18mm would just be great for portraits and I really love the user experience of primes. But when not shooting portraits on the Fujifilm X-T5, I feel like I would always keep reaching for my mid-range zoom lens and packing a fast prime in my camera sling, purely for the fact that when you're experiencing a new place for the first time, you really do not know what to expect and it's nice having that confidence and versatility of a mid-range zoom and a fast prime lens. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Remember to like and subscribe and all of that good stuff. Check out my presets and we'll see you in Korea. See you for now.